the open mic and the discussion part before we have a wrap up of the summit. And um, I saw some discussion on um, uh, on Matrix. Uh, if people want to to uh, do some more showcases demos um, right now, um, I saw at last at least that that Christian and uh, would be willing to to present something maybe and i think there's a question that check ah, yeah now that now we have a question for for, for you michael from yelle uh do you like to to uh, ask yourself or should i read it yeah so he asked if he uh, he'd like to configure ssid and dhcp <laughs> during runtime and um my what what I've seen of the code is that the underlying stuff is there. It's just the configuration parameters are hard coded at compile time right now. So uh, the question is, how would you, how would you can want? To, I want to do it for MicroPython, but how would you want to configure the SSID uh, well, uh, at runtime? Okay. Uh, well, I'm coming from Arduino and uh, already use ESP32, so I was like, okay, I can use Riot and LWIP for IPv4. And then I was like, okay, uh, the, the example that is now on Riot uses the make file to configure mm -hmm. the SSID. Yeah, and that's not then not I dove great, into eh? that and it went a uh, few defines further that extracted it from the make file. And, yeah, that's where it stopped for me. So, but but if you wanted to define it at runtime, it would still be it, it would still be a static value in your main that was doing something. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Just you would like to have a function you call rather than a make file setting is what I think you're saying. Yes. Yeah. Because... I, I want to go. I want to go a step further, which is that I want to actually pick the SSID based upon the properties I see um, from that. And um, in in that, I, and I also, if I see a device, uh, an announcement that has a, um, um, a, a WPA, uh, then uh, with a particular property, then I want to pick that one, and then I'm going to do the onboarding protocol protocol on that network. Okay. Yes, yeah, that's all fine solutions, but. It's like you said, it needs some work. Need some work. Yeah, that's exactly where I am too. I need to do yeah. that work. Yeah. Great. All right. Um yeah, I don't I don't know how we, is there anything any other business somebody wants to discuss? I mean like um maybe um some some uh, opinions uh from people new to the to the community what what you think about the summit what you think about right in general um maybe as i mean i remember uh, uh i think two years ago in, in helsinki we had uh, the discussion during the open mic session uh what are the uh features that are, are missing in in riot to um become more of a industrial success and um, I mean the, the usual suspects like security came up but also um, the problem of how to maintain um, both the pod packages uh, outside the, the main right repository um, and yeah, I, I'm wondering I'm wondering how much the situation has has changed since then. Any feedback on that, maybe? Uh, so, um, feedback from me. Um, we are actually using those external boards features and external modules features, and it has, um, yeah, evolved in in a way. So it's really usable to to me, and so for for hobbyist projects, but also at the company. So when we um, we are building a board and it has a microcontroller on it and right is is in question it's really easy to to adapt this board to write without having to pull request some board files so just start and use the external board folder you find it in the make file and there you go and so and it's in a really good shape here well that's Happy to hear that. 
you were saying that uh, when when riot is in question, um, what are the main reasons at, at your company when riot not, is not in question? Um, yeah, we are looking what's uh, what's there. <laughs> so um, at some projects uh, we use Zephyr, for example, because they have a BLE stack that's actually certified. <laughs> And um, I know Nimble, so it's available at Riot, at least for NRF devices, and it works pretty well, but you have to go through the full Bluetooth certification. And if you don't know if this will become a product that's um, with many units sold, you don't know if you want to spend the extra money for this Bluetooth specific uh, certification. And yeah, basically it's it's looking what's there, what's not there, and then maybe a short look into uh, the roadmap and what's worked on. So looking in some pull requests, and then you get an idea which system is the right one to pick. Yeah, thank you. I, I just see that there's another question from from Emmanuel uh, towards um, Michael and, and Jay, I guess. Um, there was a question whether whether we should use Casper's um, fork um, or uh, move it into into the right orga fork. As, as far as I understood it, um, the idea was like to get it uh, in upstream into the micro Python uh, repo as, as soon as possible, right? The port guess... has to go that direction, not uh, right. not into us. Right, right. And then it's. I think the flow should be going to MicroPython. So we aim at. I think it's a good idea for us to aim at. Yes, pull request to MicroPython. Try to make ports riot implementation uh, convincing to the upstream stream. Yeah, I, 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 I know that, but like, um, is it, is the situation going to happen again? And um, that, you know, we, you know, there's some lag between the moment where uh, we have stuff and the moment uh, we, it matures on in, in, in our side, and then the moment where we, we start to PR uh, upstream to MicroPython. Mm -hmm. And it seems like if we start to use that a little bit more, uh, this buffer is needed. And then it's a little bit awkward to maybe to have like a, a private branch that does that uh, to, to do this buffer. And so one question that was already rising sometime before was like, what to do with that? And uh, I was curious, like what you thought about, like what, 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 uh, what, uh, this buffer should be really. I think currently mm -hmm. there, there is a uh, in the Riot uh, source tree there is Microsoft MicroPython package which wraps like uh, right wraps the MicroPython fork with ports Riot. So now. Uh, I try to make it sim simpler, but yeah, we need a discussion and to to make it without yes this uh, buffer. <laughs> I have mm. clear answer to this too. Neither. Yeah, sure. So we'd be interested in knowing your opinion. <laughs> uh, yeah, at least uh, now. No, and now I know that, yeah, some folks are sharing this problem afloat. So why not uh, yeah, start maybe discussion uh, again, uh, if possible, yeah. Because I'm very interested in, in this uh, particular goal of putting Riot port into MicroPython. Uh in for this uh, did Casper actually try to get this upstream Casper are you here with us
Okay. Um, I think I think that uh, so uh, uh, we'll have to ask him again. But um, I think there was like uh, a mixture of uh, aspects uh, why it's not upstream. First, it uh, took some time, uh, and then you know maybe some balls were dropped here and there. And second, I think that the, um, the main developer of MicroPython was was kind of not super interested in like write specific stuff. Um, if I remember correctly, and so that there was, it was not so clear, like where, where, where should what go? Um, and so we have this for, and, uh, and it's, it's been staying like that. And so, um, yeah, it's, it, it seems to be that there, there, there's probably going to be a buffer for some time. And so the question is like, what, what do we do with this buffer? And, uh, um, but this probably requires some some more discussion. <clears throat> Maybe we don't. We, this is not the right arena to <laughs> uh, discuss this at, at length. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'd be interested in this, discussing that basically. But 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 I think it's, it's uh, interesting is that um, I mean, a couple of years ago uh, when when all this um, scripting for microcontroller um, stuff started, like when we had the port for for JavaScript to JavaScript, and Casper uh, was beginning to work on, on MicroPython, and then there's this uh, WebAssembly stuff, and there's Elua and all everything. Um, but recently, I got the feeling that, that uh, from all these options, MicroPythons, MicroPython really becomes the, the most uh, interesting one or the most popular one. Um, I mean, I had to talk. Uh, this is because if you go and watch any video about how to become an astrophysicist or something like this, um, that and there's more than one, um, they all say, and you should probably learn to program probably Python, right? And so the the non computer people, non computer science people out there are being pushed to Python the way that in the 1980s it was all you know basic. Um, so I think that's that's. That's why it's 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 popular. It is. I'm not a fan of Python myself, um, but I I think the fact that you can you can you can type type things in interactively without a without a compiler, which WebAssembly does need, um, that it's there. And I don't think it's a particularly good choice for a you know production system, um, but I think it's a really useful thing for people who. Um, um, need to play around with before they get their stuff right um and then it's not it's not terrible i mean it's not terrible if all you're doing is collecting three datas from a sensor multiplying them and sending them on the network right it's not a terrible way to do it well actually i, I just recently heard of a project at uh, at uh, Zuko where um people are using um micro python in a, a project with with real time uh requirements uh, in order to get uh, um, smaller um, firmware update chunks somehow, I mean, in order to get rid of um, the, the typical um, replace the whole um, firmware issue that you have with, with statically linked um, C blobs. Um, so that just made me made me wonder if if, if this whole Microsoft Python thing actually becomes relevant for 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 industry create stuff. Uh, um, if I was selling a sensor that had a bunch of different modules that could go in, and I see no reason to rev the the C C firmware every time, and then when you deploy it into an industrial scenario, you use you know twenty lines of Python to actually is actually your configuration. Now you don't need a configuration parser and a this and a that. It's just these are the things, and we and you have a file system, and you can literally plug in a you know some of these uh, the latest Adafruit kind of things. Um, they are you plug in you plug in the USB on the device, and it shows up as a drive in your Windows computer, and you drop Python files in it, and then I guess you do something, and then it you know takes the drive back again, but it's got you know a fat file system or something sitting there. That's what people are doing, and it seems very it seems very attractive to me.
the, the, the meantime, yeah. at least. Um, well, I think if you look at MicroPython and to get going, it's, it's, it's really easy. Uh, at our hackerspace, we have this thing called a space stage switch, which actually is a big switch you pull. And then it uh, tells the rest of the internet if someone is in or there. And yeah, it's, it's basically one evening of hacking in MicroPython and then setting up the web server and you're there. Uh, and that's, that's basically one of the best IoT examples that is there to get going. And, that, and I agree completely with Michael, then that's what all the kids are learning at this moment. They're just they're just all doing it without any real security and no identities and you know the onboarding to the the local Wi-Fi is completely you know mostly completely insecure um, and uh, and you know if you throw in MAC address randomization none of the stuff people are doing is going to survive so um, uh, so that's a you know an additional thing I don't know whether IoT devices should randomize their MAC addresses or not it depends on a lot on how they're being used and where they're being used and do you carry them around and stuff um like you know the switch at the hacker space i don't think needs to privacy <laughs> no, um, no. yeah that but but great. but but some other device that you might carry around in your person probably does um and if you start if you were to start selling switches for people's houses then you might start saying that oh maybe i don't want people to get be able to get an inventory of what they have uh, that way, so you might want to randomize addresses in some way, um, but it it really it really makes it very very hard to set up you know the even for a sophisticated person to set up any kind of security on their on their network if the MAC address is not predictable. Yeah. So, um, so that's you know there. But if you if if you get a, a credential into the device and you can do onboarding with uh, you know uh, WPA Enterprise, then suddenly it's not a problem. Yeah, of course. And yeah, uh, at our place, it's uh, on our local uh, uh, Wi-Fi network, and then it talks to our big server that has all the security that you want. And it's not visible. It is only visible from the internet via our server and not the, the switch itself. No, but because it's on Wi-Fi, anyone, yes. anyone capturing packets, even though it's encrypted, the MAC address still shows up. Oh yeah, of course. Okay, so the point is, you can still make an an, an an observer can still make an inventory of everything that's on your network, or even stuff that's not on your network but would like to be, and keeps trying and failing. You know, can still see that too. Um, so, yeah, that that's of course uh, that first question is there. Yeah. Um. I have a small example of using Riot in an industrial example. Um, we, uh, I'm working on a uh, wind turbine, uh, which we have a prototype. And uh, as a, for the embedded platform, we use a blue pill with uh, the board I designed. And uh, well, last year I was looking for an embedded operating system that could program the blue pill because I needed something better than an Arduino. And after a small comparison, uh, I chose Riot because it was actually easy to start with, and it has basically has some mechatronic uh, functions for PWM and the quadrature decoder. And it, yeah, it's worked really nice up to now. Um, I also like you have some uh, communication interfaces for. Uh, uh, for your device, although we use a simple UART uh, interface with RS422 to, to keep things simple. But uh, instead of just um, yeah, programming that SGM32 uh, bare bones or with, uh, with Cubamax, we now have an operating system that makes it easier to, to program uh, our device and that speeds up our development. So that, that's the, the little showcase uh, that I could provide. Nice. Okay, I think if, if there's any um, anything else to discuss, we can also uh, have it uh, in the evening 
sea shanty uh, session um, and I would now hand over